So we're now reflecting, we've had a couple of weeks now to think about the uh, recent autumn statement budget 2024 and interesting having conversations with clients about it. In particular, the national insurance change has been huge. Uh, the national insurance for employers going up, so this kind of indirect way of saying we're not going to tax workers, we're actually going to tax the employers instead, the business owners. So you've probably seen the uh, rate has gone up from 13.8% to 15%, so 1.2% increase in rate, but a sneaky little uh, way of making it get triggered earlier on employees, because previously, or under current rules, until 5th of April 2025, it doesn't actually trigger until you have earnings of £9,100, and they're going to reduce that to £5,000 from next April 2025. So that means it bites much sooner, costing about £600 £615 per employee from 5th of April 2025 on that alone. Then you factor in the 2% increase on the uh, up, on the kind of total earnings. The, so, sorry, the 1.2% increase, then you've got a potential significant problem for companies in terms of costs because there's, there's no limit on employers and I see it goes all the way up uh, to the maximum amount of earnings they have. So in from £5,000, all unlimited, 15% flat rate uh, from uh, next April 2025. To soften that blow, they didn't introduce this uh, employment allowance increase. So it goes up from the current £5,000 to £10,500 from next April. That should mean that most kind of employees, um, sorry, companies with a small amount of employees, say five to eight, depending on the level of earnings, shouldn't see any uh, increase in their LIC bill. Uh, so they might see less uh, because uh, the other thing to add into that is there used to be a limit that has this current limit that if your employer's NI is more than £100,000, I think it's employer's NI, but there's a limit of £100,000, um, then you don't qualify for this employment allowance. They're going to scrap that so all um, companies can get it. Uh, it will, if you've, got, if you've got multiple businesses, then it's kind of associated company rules. You can't have it across each company. Um, but still, ten and a half grand off one of them is, is, is not to be sniffed at. Although, when we said that, now that we've had time to reflect on and crunch the numbers, you find that some companies have got enormous hits to the bottom line from this. I was just speaking just the other day to a hospitality owner who's got an extra 500k to find next year in terms of NIC bill and also including the increase in the national minimum wage uh, has hit them. So big hit there. And, you know, across larger you know, entrepreneurs who've got multiple companies, they're looking at potentially millions added to the bottom line. And, you know, what... What that often misses is the fact that the difference between profitable, you know, profits before tax um, and, uh, you know, people assume you know, you've got broad shoulders, you're making profits, but you've got to, often these companies have got debt and they want to service the debt. And that kind of leads me on to, the, I think, the sort of the, the point that isn't being discussed enough, I don't think, is the impact on inflation. Because nearly everyone I speak to that, you know, the hospitality owner I mentioned a moment ago said, you know, we can't swallow £500,000, we're going to have to pass it on to the consumer, to the customer. So pretty much universally UK businesses are going to start putting their prices up uh, as a result of this. So suddenly you're going to get prices shooting up, uh, therefore inflation is going to get kick, kick in and therefore what's the knock-on effect from that? The Bank of England's going to step in and start increasing interest rates again to try and quell the inflation. If you look already, the 10-year yield um, on gilts is already spiking up. It's about, it's not far off the rates, if not higher than when Liz Truss's you know, fateful budget came out when uh, it's got sent to, into a tailspin. It was more the rapid rise that was the real problem there. But if you look at actual levels at 4.4, 4.5% now in terms of uh, the kind of 10-year yield, which is always the kind of the, the driving force you have to look at as to what, what influences markets and interest rates. So, and you've noticed, you know, you look around, mortgage rates are being um, taken down. Lower ones, you know, they used to be able to get a five-year fix with starting with a 3, 3%. They seem to have been pulled in recent weeks. So, and that's before this kicks in. So this does, this inflationary impact won't really kick in until next uh, April. So I think we're going to start seeing that uh, coming through. Although I guess maybe some businesses will start now. You know, they, they're getting ready for it. They're going to start putting their prices up in anticipation of this hit that's going to come through employers and I, which is not good news. And what can you do about it? I mean, some businesses will, some businesses will look at things like um, potential salary sacrifice, but that, that will apply more to kind of higher income uh, businesses, so, you know, maybe software businesses, service businesses, who can maybe look at reducing gross wages and then giving more in pension contributions, because there's no, right now, there's no employers NIC on employer contributions, so that's one thing that could happen. 
Um, what else? I mean, aside from that, there's not a huge amount. I mean, apart from things like the kind of more nuclear options, like letting go of workers, not taking on more staff, um, is not great uh, at all. You know, that's not what been, Rachel Reeves would have been wanting for sure. Um, I'm not sure. You wonder how much they thought they think these things through. Um, other thing you're going to be sort of looking at more, I think, increasingly revenue per employee is going to become more important metric KPI than businesses because uh, you know making sure you're getting the most out of your employees, your team members is going to become critical because of this uh, this impact. Uh, it's going to undoubtedly strike. So that's you know one of the, bit, the headlines. I think employees and I has come out of that. Other things, CGT changes, again, they carefully managed that because they, they hinted that it's going to be like, you know, harmonised with income tax, up to 45%. Um, as things turned out, you know, it's only increased to 24%. Um, we saw the phase change to business asset disposal relief, entrepreneurs relief, which, <clears throat> you know, it's it's not great going up 14%, then 18% by 2026 from the current 10%. Not ideal. You know, what can you do about it? I mean... We'll see on this. I mean, one thing that a lot of people don't seem to be aware of is things like, I mean, it depends if it's a retirement sale, it's more difficult. But if you're selling a business, you know, do something else, you you know, you're kind of a an entrepreneur, you could look at EIS deferral relief. So potentially looking to roll over into your next EIS, into an EIS investment, could be your own next business. Um, but I think we'll be doing more and more work around that as time moves on. So um, EIS is going to become more and more popular. I think EIS, SES and EIS have become more popular generally. I think because of the um, favourable income tax benefits there and also CGT. Also SAS is a, a sneaky little way of getting half of a gain exempted, albeit it's quite a small amount because your, your limit on um, SAS as an investment in a year is 200k as an individual. So that's potentially something you can look at there. So, I mean, I suppose one thing to say, it's not all bad news. You know, if you're an entrepreneur, please reach out for help um, to, look at, to look at your particular situation. There are things we can do. This is what entrepreneurs do. You've got to find ways around this. We've been dealt this, this, these cards and we've got to deal with it. So we can certainly help you navigate through that. And there are things you can do. As all things tend to be, you know, reach out earlier rather than later because once things are done, it's hard to undo things. Um, you can't really undo things as such. So planning in advance is going to be key. Um, we kind of know where we are for the foreseeable. So we can deal with that. And um, yeah, hope that's useful. Um, and uh, yeah, please reach out for me with more help. Thanks for watching.